right. Afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Ben with Bates Nursery, and we're doing kind of uh, uh, impromptu um, service announcement webinar today uh, in response to our upcoming freezing weather. Um, so if y'all have been watching the weather at all, if you have been outside today, y'all definitely know that we've seen a cold front come in. Um, and this is pretty common for Middle Tennessee, and, and this is something we battle with every year. Um, so we just want to kind of give y'all a, a quick tutorial on mitigating spring frost. Uh, of course, today is April 1st. Um, there's no April Fool's joke. You may have to cover some of your plants if they've started to push. Um, just something we need to consider um, if you really want to keep your plants in really good condition. Um, so yeah, we're just going to talk about um, what to cover and some methods you can use to do it. Um, here at Bates Nursery, uh, our plants that are tender, susceptible to frost, um, we're covering them with uh, basically a shade-like tarp, a fabric tarp, and then we also put a regular plastic tarp on top to protect them um, overnight from our freezing winds, and then we can uncover them during the day. So that's what we do here. Um, and this is something that typically happens mid to late April. So um, March through April, so we're right in the middle of it right now, is when I would kind of look and check on your frost schedule. And the problem is that in March, we've had a lot of warm weather. This has told a lot of our plants to start growing um, a little earlier than usual. And if our plants have really responded, um, then we do have a chance of losing some of that new growth if we get a hard freeze. So um, this is what we're talking about, this warm up and then freeze. Usually uh, second or third week of April, we're kind of out of the woods. Um, so just something to keep in mind for the next few weeks. Okay, so what do you need to cover? What do you need to worry about? What should you not worry about? Um, you know, you don't need to cover anything. Um, in fact, if, if you're okay with a little bit of burn, a little bit of dieback, it depends on how cold it gets. But, you know, some people do decide just to let their plants deal with it. Um, sometimes you get damaged, sometimes not. I have uh, azaleas, uh, native azaleas, trying to have buds swell. Um, I've got dogwoods trying to open their blooms. And this is something that can really ruin um, your bloom performance and look through the year. So you might consider covering those things um, that are really showy in your garden and really important to you. Um, so yeah, whenever we're talking what to cover, I have a boxwood here as an example, which is a good um, average plant that is good to cover when we get new growth. So this boxwood, uh, this is winter gem. You can see it has light green new foliage on the outside. That's all tender, soft. Um, I can actually physically pinch these um pinch these leaves off. So these are fresh and soft and tender. This is something that we'd worry about if the temperature gets well below freezing. Um, so this is kind of what we're looking for in our evergreens. This new foliage, this like inch or two, um, could definitely turn brown and die back with a freeze. Uh, the rest of this plant would likely be okay, but you're going to get a little bit of die back. It's not going to kill the plant, but it'll make it look rough for a few months. So um, this is a plant we'll use as, as an example for covering. Um, again, fresh new growth. This is something that I would uh, be keeping a keen eye on coming into a frost. Um, you know, I've plucked off a couple branches on this. You may not be able to tell, but um, I have some light green tender growth and some dark green older growth. If it's old growth from last year, not light green, you're probably safe on your plants if they haven't started growing. Um, the frost should not hurt them. So tender new growth. Um, blooms and bud swelling. So uh, azaleas, dogwoods, I'm trying to think of some other plants. Hydrangeas really shouldn't be up. Um, but if you have blooms um, either open or the buds are almost open, uh, that's something that could absolutely get damaged by frost. Um, and depending on the plant, you may lose blooms for a year if that happens. So um, anything that's in bloom right now, consider covering. Um, fruit trees can be a little difficult, but, you know, if your fruit tree is in full bloom, um, that's where your fruit from this year comes from. So if you can save those blooms and salvage them, um, it can help your production. Uh, and then non-cold hardy evergreens. So, you know, if we've got gardenia... 
uh, or rhododendron or camellia, some of those more ten tender plants, if they're trying to grow already, I would definitely cover them. Um, this is when they really receive the most damage is in this spring green up. So um, I've got a fragrant tea olive that's got fresh growth um, that will uh, very easily burn back over this uh, probably tonight if I don't cover it. So um, something to consider your cold, tender evergreens. And that's pretty much it. Um, if your plants are still underground, if your foliage is nice and dark and tough, you should be just fine um, through a little bit of freezing weather. Um, I'm going to mention what I would just skip outright. Um, again, things with no new growth, you're not seeing growth, you're not seeing budding. Um, generally, I wouldn't worry about it. It shouldn't be tender to damage. Um, the flowers aren't open. You know, if you have little swollen flower buds, but they are not really anywhere close to opening, you should be fine. Um, and then needled evergreens, generally our needled evergreens for the most part are very cold tolerant. So pines, um, arborvitae, juniper, things like that um, really don't need any protection right now. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically it. Obviously, if, if you have a concern about a specific plant, let us know. Come in and ask us about it or um, send us a message on, on social media. Uh, we'd love to let you know what to prepare for. But I've got a few products on here you can use to mitigate frost. Um, and I'm going to use this boxwood as an example. So if we can just pretend um, that this boxwood is sitting in our garden bed and our box right here is our ground level, um, we'll kind of show you some things you can do. So um, Frost jackets and frost caps. Uh, probably the easiest thing you can buy in a store. I've got a couple of uh, frost jackets here. They're usually fleece, um, some sort of breathable material. Um, we carry them in small, medium, large for different plants. These are nice because they're reusable. Um, so especially if you have container plants or you have plants that grow every spring and burn back every year, this is, might be a good investment. Um, we also sell frost caps, which uh, we don't have here today, um, but a frost cap is basically similar thing, but it's a harder cap that you can literally put on top of the plant like a hat and then just remove it whenever it gets warm again. So frost jackets, uh, frost caps, you just put it on uh, the night before and then you take it off the next day. The good thing about these breathable jackets um, is if you forget to take this off when it warms up, um, the plant won't necessarily suffocate and overheat. So with these, um, you have a little bit of leeway on of uncovering your plants. You may even be able to use it for a couple of freezing nights and leave it on there. So um, frost jackets, really handy thing to have. All different sizes. Um, again, there might be alternatives to this. Um, you might be able to make your own out of fleece or a bag. I've got some burlap here, which we'll talk about uh, next. So the fleece jackets, again, that's more of something you can buy over the counter. Um, burlap or felt. So this is burlap. Um, ideally, it'd be a little tighter this, more like a, a coffee bean bag or something. So burlap is nice because it insulates and it also allows the plant to breathe. Um, same thing with felt. You know, we get felt. Um, it's a pretty cheap material. We get it wrapping the trunks of our trees. Felt is a breathable material that will insulate. Um, as well as sheets, you know, uh, an old bed sheet, um, old pillow covers, all of these are going to keep that plant just warm enough and keep the frost off just enough to keep it from getting damaged. So, um, you know, if we're going to have a freezing night only, you know, two to six degrees below freezing, the um, frost jackets, burlap, felt sheets might be enough to protect your plants. Um, now, if we're getting down into the mid-20s and lower, definitely um, these may not be enough. Um, so that you may need to go into uh, a second layer, and I'll talk about that in a second, um, which would be a tarp or a piece of plastic on top of that protection um, to give you an extra layer. So I've got a piece of black plastic here. Um, ideally, you'd use something like a tarp, uh, whether it's clear, um, black is going to attract a lot of heat, so you do need to be a little careful if we're going to have a warm day. Um, garbage bags, anything that's sealed, this is really going to hold the heat in um, overnight um, when we're going through these deep freezes. So uh, a, permeable, a permeable layer and then a plastic layer on top of that. 
uh, is going to give us double protection. And that's what we do here on the lot. Um, and, and we'll give you an example here in just a second. Um, but yeah, tarps, plastic. Um, I have a cocoa liner here just to give you, you know, you can use whatever you have on hand. This is a cocoa liner made for uh, hanging baskets. This would be a great insulator um, when turned upside down. So this is a lot like a frost cap. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you that. So if this is in our ground, we want to protect this boxwood. Um, the first method were these jackets or the caps. And the caps literally just set right on top of that plant. Um, ideally, that plant has room inside there. The leaves aren't scrunched up. But this is going to cut out wind, it's going to cut out cold, and it's going to hold a little bit of that plant's heat around that plant. So um, a frost cap, a frost jacket. The frost jacket cinch around the base, so it's just like a, like a little sport bag you can cinch around it. Um, those are really handy. And then, um, like I said, the burlap or the felt. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the double method. So if we know it's going to get pretty cold, our plant is really tender, um, you know, we could use the burlap to put over the plant. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on nice and light. Again, this burlap is very open weave. If you could find something tighter, that'll be much better. Um, but I've protected this plant with this burlap. You know, this will get it through a cold lot night just below freezing. Um, but if I know we're going to have a really hard dip, I'll put a piece of plastic or tarp over on a second. over that first layer. Um, so right now we've got really good protection. Um, you could put rocks around this plastic to keep it on the ground for just extra protection. Um, one disclaimer when using the plastic or the tarps is um, this time of year sometimes we have a freezing night and then a sunny warm day. You know sometimes it gets 30 degrees at night and 60 degrees, 70 degrees during the day. Um, in that case, if you do have uh, the plastic on top of that plant, you wanna get that off in the morning um, when it starts to get above freezing. Because if this plastic stays on that plant on a sunny, warm day, it'll literally be a sauna in this uh, cover and it can literally uh, fry or burn your plant. So um, the plastic is a great method of protection. Just make sure we get it off the plant on those warm days. Um, or else we're actually doing something called solarizing, which is the way people get rid of weeds. So um, just with the plastic, great method. Just make sure we take that off um, when it warms up during the day. Uh, and that's exactly what we do here at Bates Nursery. So um, you'd be surprised how, how warm it can get under this plastic, which is what we're trying to do. Um, all these plants do give off some heat, just like we do as humans. So we're just holding that heat these plants are giving off and that's enough to keep them warm under that blanket so um trying to think i did get one more product up here and this is more of a um, spray application and we talked about this uh during living christmas tree season um, but this is wilt stop um, and so most of our frost burn actually comes from these plants drying out as it gets cold. So when it gets cold, it literally sucks all the moisture out of these plants. They transpire through their leaves. And if a plant goes into a freeze very dry, um, it has nowhere to give water to the atmosphere. So it literally burns from being dry. Um, that's what this wilt proof product does. Um, I would use this sparingly only on certain plants, but what this does is put a waxy coating on that plant to keep it from losing uh, moisture. So this is another way to do it. Um, you really shouldn't apply this more than once or twice a year. Um, so, you know, you could apply this before we're going into uh, spring freeze season or fall spring se uh, fall freeze season um, to kind of give that plant a little extra resilience. Um, that being said, watering your plants, if it's dry, watering your plants be uh, before a freeze can also help quite a bit. So, um, and this is really just what we wanted to talk with you all about today. Just give you all some, um, some information so you can make a good decision going forward. Um, you know, we're probably not out of the woods on freezing for another two or three weekends. So um, do keep your eye on the calendar. Tonight looks to be um, a good bit below freezing. And then we're supposed to get up to some warmer temperatures. So, um, yeah, just giving you all an idea of what to do for frost preparation 
mitigating the damage and doing what's best for your garden. Um, so yeah, uh, y'all have any questions? I'm just going to jump in here real yeah. quick. Uh, yes. So you have any questions right now? We're only streaming to Facebook. Uh, we had, uh, an, I guess, kind of an immediacy that we yeah. needed to attend to here with yeah. the 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 degree of the freeze. Right. And, pun intended. And, yeah. And, and really the fact that we've had a, a substantial warm weather below, before this freeze is, is what can make it potentially dangerous. Some of these plants are growing quite a bit, and that's that's kind of what uh, kind of signals our alarm bells to kind of keep an eye out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to wait another second. If sure. you have a question, sure. go ahead and, and add it below. Uh, I think Ben was pretty comprehensive. I mean, I have been wrapping sheets around yeah. branches There's... of my, my fruit trees, you know, yeah. kind of out of desperation but maybe i'll save you know yeah. a few blossoms yeah there's do-it-yourself methods um depends on how far you want to go i mean there's orchard growers who will literally wrap each fruit on their tree i mean you know if you want to go uh, above and beyond you can totally do it um just whatever makes the most sense for you i know we're all pretty busy nowadays so um being able to manage your frost protection is definitely key Yes, and I would not underestimate if this, you know, this cold front's been blowing in like it has all day mm, mm -hmm. to definitely uh, secure whatever cover you're using, you know, like Ben said, with rocks or blocks yeah. or whatever, what have you, and try and try and hit all four corners, maybe even in mm -hmm. between those corners. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't have, you wake up to a surprise blown over cover in the morning like I did. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'll say a lot of plants. Most plants don't die with frost damage. They just look rough for a little while. So um, if your plants get damaged a lot of time, last year I planted tomatoes a little too early. They died down to the ground, and then they came out as little miniature tomatoes after that. Excuse huh. me. Um, so they were stunted by about two or three weeks. Overall, they were fine, but my crops were, were lagging behind because of that. So um, something to consider. Yeah, it's ironic. You want to get ahead getting your plants in, you know, and, and then the the frost still yeah. curtails your plans. Yeah. So with that, I think we're going to go ahead and sign off the air. Yep. Take it away, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, stay warm tonight. Um, you know, when you get home, do your prep, uh, you know, whatever. Say a little prayer, say a little wish overnight, and, you know, everything will be all right. Even if we get a little damage, everything will come back, so... You know, do whatever you can overnight to protect your plants, your investments. Um, but we're still gearing up for spring planting. So don't be afraid. You can protect what you have. And, um, you know, just let us know how we can help.